anyway, Rob, how's how's things in Birmingham? Um, give us an update on. Yeah, I mean, guys, you know, I mean, I I did something today um, on on uh, my own Facebook, and uh, you know, I do sympathise with a lot of people at the moment in the industry. You know, we're, we're at uncertain times at the moment. It's unprecedented this what's actually going on, and everyone's got their own story to tell. You know, I do sympathise with them. I, I'm, I'm a person that, I, you know, I want to support them, I want to help them, I want to guide them in, in, in a way that that we can all learn and understand how we survive this at the end of the day. But the government at the moment haven't locked us down. You know, we don't know whether or not it's going to be next week or whatever. You know, I mean, I, I don't think they want to do that at the moment, but if it spreads, if it spreads, then it, it gets worse. I mean, we're ending, the numbers are getting higher and higher. I don't think they'll have any alternative to do that, Sean, to be honest. You know, so all I can say to uh, hairdressers and barbers out there at the moment, listen, they haven't locked us down at the moment. If you feel that it's right for your business and right for the people that work for you, whether they rent the chairs or whether they're employed, carry, continue doing what you're doing. If it's not right for you, then shut your shop. It, it's your choice. It's your options at the end of the day. This virus, um, we, it will be beaten. You know, Boris, Boris Johnson has come out. He's put a, a timeline on it now of 13 weeks. He reckons he, he, he can be beaten, you know. But I personally think this is going to continue probably well into next year, you know, with the economy and the downturn and all the rest of it, Sean, sure, to be honest. It's, these uncertain times are very tough for a lot of individuals out there in the moment, mate. So, so Rob, that, that, brings, that brings me to uh, the important question of um, how, how, how badly do you think this is going to affect the hair industry and, and do you think a lot of shops are going to close down? Well, you know, I personally think you have to have a structure, you have to have a plan, and, and if you've got a plan uh, in, in place at the moment in your business, uh, you'll survive. If you haven't got a plan or a structure or a focus of, in belief how to get through this, uh, again, it's going to be tough for, for businesses or maybe individuals in, indirectly to make a living. Sure, you know because people are going to pay their they're going to pay the rent still. They've got wages to pay, the rent of the chair, whether you're self-employed. You know, there's various. And of course, if the customers aren't coming through the door, then we've all got a problem, haven't we? You know, but it, it, that because that's what's driven. It's driven through uh, people coming through the door. And the thing is, Sean, if you look at it in the as this aspect, if people can't go out to the pub or people can't go to the cinema or people can't go out in general at, at present, there ain't nothing, I suppose, to kind of like go out for and come and get your hair cut at the moment. But I think that's the short term look at it as a long term jeopardy of all of it, Sean, is that um, when it does start, declining which i think it will do in time maybe june or july time then people will start going out people will start going to the clubs and going to the restaurants and cinema and then they'll have more of a focus that oh go and get me hair cut i want to go and i want to look dapper and this and that but present sean i just don't think people want to come and get the hair cut at the moment and, th and and this is the main reason you know who they're going to show it off to that's what i'm trying to say yeah. There's no, there's no, there's no reason to have your hacker if you can't go out. Yeah. No, you know, I mean, it's 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 one of them, isn't it? We're we're driven by fashion and look, and you know, pe pe people want to look their best and they want to show it off. You know, whether they buy a, a new top or a, or a pair of jeans and have the haircut, they want to show that off. And if they can't show it off mm -hmm. at the moment, there's no point probably necessarily getting your hair cut at present. But you know what? Mm -hmm. You know. Uh, it, it will pick up, you know. We uh, the country will get over this. Um, the the good hairdressers and barbers out there will survive it as long as they've got a proper action plan and a proper structure in place. But prior to that, Sean, um, we're all in it together. Let's support each other, you know, mm -hmm. on these uncertain times, you know. So, well, again, you know, this. this 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 interview I'm going to do today, I want to try and get a couple of people on. So, Mark, if you want to come on after Robert, yeah. that would be great. Um, just give us a thumbs up. Rob, let's talk about insurance. Um, so, a lot of businesses have got insurances. 
Um, some of them will be covered for this incident, some of them won't. What's yeah. your advice? Well, you know, you've got to check your policy out, guys. You know, if you've got, you're on your own business. You've got to check your policy out. So if we're going down the route of business interruption insurance, you've got to, you've got to read through the, the fine print in the, in the policy and the wording. Now, I, I, I emailed my insurance company today, and they're, they're basically saying that um, uh, someone in my business has, has got to have the coronavirus for, for them to pay out, for instance. So at present, Sean, no one in my business has got the coronavirus. No one's been isolated whatsoever. You know, again, you know, how did you ever see of proving this? I've, you know, I mean, no one's being tested at present uh, uh, for the coronavirus. So if someone in my business comes down with it, what they're saying, I could potentially make a claim. But I do feel insurance companies are trying to avoid and get out and pay uh, business interruption. You know, how many years have I been paying insurance? 30 years. How many years have I claimed? Twice. So, you know, they've had a lot of money out of me over them years. And these insurance companies have got to look at their own uh, policy and their own agendas and their own longevity because it, it, they're going to be questioned in the long run. They're going to be found out for not helping small businesses, medium-sized businesses up and down the country, not just in the hairdressing and barbering industry, but generally overall, Sean. You know, mm-hmm. they first came out with the, with, you know, obviously with the pubs and the restaurants, you know, um, Boris Johnson, you know, it didn't, hasn't necessarily closed them down or locked them down. He just basically told um, customers not to go there. So you might as well just close them down, which was a wrong move in my eyes, to be honest. Rob, well, if I just stop you there a second, uh, yeah. I just want to just go into what Boris has said the last couple of days. Um, me personally, I haven't taken anything from it. I'm still very confused on what we're doing. Um, yeah. Could you make any sense of, of what that crazy lunatic was talking about? Well, look, 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 whatever your uh, political party is or agenda, I think, what, you know, we, they, they, these politicians, we, we, look, I, I've never known anything like this. You know, there's a lot of people that don't know any. They're, they're treating it like, we said, like we're, we're a war type of thing. You know, everything that, that that's being said and done, I think they're doing their best and the utmost best to support business because their their overall plan, Sean, is trying to keep people in employment, mate. You know, they have thrown a lot of money on within grants and loans and various other things, but they are trying to support businesses. You know, it's a hard job for the government. You know, I personally think the lockdown that they are talking about is the last scenario the jigsaw they don't want to do that mate because to the economy it, it, it will be it may it, it, it will well, it could collapse a lot of businesses up and down the country not just in our industry mate you know well, i've I got to ask the question what everybody's thinking rob you know yeah. do you think do you think this was um done on purpose or do you think it was done by accident um the reason why i'm saying this is is because uh, it's very good timing for the sort of you know, the sort of launch of 5G, but also to sort of get rid of many and, and take control more centrally, virus more of a central government. Look, everyone has their own competitive theories behind what, what's going on. I mean, I think there is something in it, you know, because the Chinese, I mean, orig- originating it's come from China. Uh, this is where the coronavirus has come from, from their wet markets. Uh, that's supposed to have a bat or whatever. So potentially it's come from China. Personally, personally myself, I think uh, China and the trade deal with the USA, um, I think a lot of it's got to do with trade and trade agreements and money and various... So there, there could be something within the 5G, uh, Sean. I mean, we've all got our own theories, but I, I, I just think, you know, it's it, these politicians... Uh, yeah, and look, I've always said about politicians, uh, excuse me if I'm going to swear, guys, but they always piss in the different pots, me and you. A politician will not look like us people will at present, and politicians <clears throat> are doing a specific job that, that they feel do, that, that's right, you know, but you've just got to make one thing clear. Wh- whatever's happened, mate, 
where the, the, us, the general public, whether you're in America, the United Kingdom, or anywhere in Europe, we're the ones that are going to go through it. We're the ones that are going to suffer. We're the ones that have got, you know, raw core problems in our lives, whether it's financial, whether it's if you've got the virus or you're self-isolating. You know, Sean, it's, again, it's very uncertain times. And I'm hoping... I've all, you know me, Sean. I've always been a positive person. Yeah. Um, I just, I just think that you know, it will come to an end. Things will come to an end, and we need to think the longevity of bringing the positivity back in the industry. The good hairdressers and the good barbers will survive. That's what I'm yeah. saying. As long as you've got a clear action plan in place. Yeah, definitely. So, Rob, as I was just about to say that as well. Um, have you contacted the government on the help which they, they're making available for self-employed people? Yeah, so obviously, you know, guys, you've got to remember, you know, do you read? And there's a lot of stuff on social media at the moment. So personally, myself, um, if you claim the small business relief at the moment, which a lot of small businesses do, so if your rateable value is under 15000 for instance, a lot of people are entitled for the grants, whether it's ten to twenty-five thousand pounds. Now, it's your local authority will distribute this money, and it's a, because it's a grant, you don't have to pay it back. Now, the reason that the government are supporting us in this, this aspect is to cover people's wages, to yeah. cover your rents, to cover your out outgoings, so it keeps you sustainable over this this period. I haven't got a crystal ball, Sean, how long this is going to last. I'm hoping the government are right, and they're saying, I mean, Boris has come out, he reckons 13 weeks, okay, that they could get on top of it. But potentially, for the, for the damaging to the economy, mate, potentially this could go in for years, mate, years. You know, again, I've never known anything like it uh, at all. Mark just dropped a comment down the, sh the shade doctor saying that it's better if we all just lock down, they're all in the same boat down, everything can just close and we can... Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I mean, listen... Uh, one sec, Rob, what you were saying to me the other day was, was which I thought, well, I actually thought about what you said, I thought actually you were bang on the money there. If we lock down too early um, and then the virus doesn't come for another two, three weeks, hit us yeah. like you know, in Italy, because you yeah. don't know how... One sec, one sec, let me finish. Yeah. Let me finish, Rob. So we didn't realise what was going on in Italy until it started happening recently the last couple of weeks. And we also don't know how long it's been laying dormant in Italy. So yeah. we don't know how many it's sort of already passed around. Um, but we seem to have got the figures and, and we more people are alert in this country. Yeah. Um with this, but what you said about locking down too early, could you just go go into what you yeah, were... No, I, I just that? want to explain something. Look, I'm, I'm not a medical expert or a scientist or anything like that. So no, you're a grandmaster barber. Yeah, yeah, I know I am a grandmaster barber, but what I'm saying is if I just... <laughs> no, right? At the moment, we're probably here in the water, right? What we need to look at, a, 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 a scenario, is... Getting this up to that point so it's full. When it's full, that means the virus is at the highest at the highest point. If it's low, we're not at the highest point. So once we reach that highest point on that glass, on, on this half a point that I've got here, that's when you should lock the country down, basically. Because potentially we're at that point where it's at the highest. If you lock down too soon, we're not at that highest point, and it will spread further, basically. Mm. Again, mm. That's, that, that's, that's my, it's only an opinion, mm. you know, mm. and that's, why, that's how I'm seeing it. Because when you, when you look at Italy, and it's interesting, the reports are coming out of Italy at the moment, they have now overtaken China for deaths. They've had over mm. 3,000 deaths, you know, in, in Italy. So it originated from China, the coronavirus, remember so Europe now, Italy, three thousand people have died from it. You know, Sean, you know, this is you know, this pandemic is is, is serious business and you know, I I I, I and the condolences to the people that have lost their lives, you know, and and various 
they've gone through the families and the anguish that they've gone through. I've lost parents and it's not nice. Um, you know, yes, three yeah. open people are knocking a country down like Italy. Oh. He's, he's the right thing. I don't mm. personally think at present locking down Britain um, is he, uh, the right thing at the moment. It mm. will happen, but we need to peak at the highest point before we do it. Look, there's a lot of, lot of barber shops in Southern uh, Ireland. Um, basically, you know, they, the government have announced that they need to, to lock it down, and they've been locked down probably four or five days now, Sean. And yeah. if, if, any, 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 if anybody jumps on the live feed while we're watching this, anyone from Ireland, uh, any barbers, um, give me a message and we'll do a live chat and, and talk about what yeah. exactly is going on over so, there. Because you know, I think we need to do more live videos with each other where we all are and keep everybody up to date. Yes, definitely. definitely. Look, I'm, I'm, you know, it's your business at the end of the day. And yeah. if you feel it's right for your business to keep it open, if it's not right for your business, then shut it. It's your decision. But obviously, if you're told by government you've got to lock down, you've got to lock down. And I, I respect the decisions from governments. Yeah. I'm not a politician myself, and I respect them yeah. decisions because it becomes more of a health issue rather than, than a, a, you know, uh, making a living because to, to control the spread of it, basically, to save well, people's lives. Well, if, I, if Ireland have already locked out, why haven't we? You know, why well, is it taking so long? Is it, is it because the government wanted to spread? No, Southern Ireland's different. It's the EU, isn't it? Northern Ireland's still part of the UK. So obviously, um, Belfast and uh, Northern Ireland are still, uh, you know, again, they're probably still trading, but Southern, Southern Ireland, like Dublin and Limerick and places like that, a lot of them have uh, shut down. Um, they have their reasons, and I can understand that because they, they don't want to, you know, obviously the spread of it. I think reports are they've only, I think there's only about 78 cases where I'm aware of that was in Southern Ireland. So they were quite low. Again, the governments make these decisions. It seems to me that the EU has shut a lot of countries down. So Poland uh, shut down Spain, France, Italy, you know, Belgium. Um, that, uh, you know, we got to remember with the EU, they have the Schengen mm -hmm. Agreement. So they, they have a free, free, you know, they can go over each border. What people forget to realise about the UK is that we're an independent country on our own. We've got that water dividing, so we're not we're not landlocked. You see what I'm saying, Sean? So yeah. you know, no one's mentioned this about mm. it, but, and 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 this is why I think whatever your view is on on the government, I just think they 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 have got a difficult job on their hands to kind mm. of keep everybody happy. It, not everyone's going to be happy, sure. Not everybody, no. you know, but they're potentially. What they're looking at is the spread of it. So if it's spreading more and more and more and more, what they'll do, they'll look at the demographics of the UK and they'll start shutting down areas that have got more spread of it than areas that haven't. So, for instance, you know, that's, yeah. that's what's going to happen, mate. So in Birmingham, I think there's about 30, 35 cases where I don't think anyone has died from it in Birmingham. In oh, London, that's brilliant news. That's brilliant news. In, in London, I think there's been a, a reported over 50, 50 people that, that have died from like, it. The UK death toll is 124 people at the moment and, and, and going up daily. Yeah, it's going up. It's going up about. It's going up about 30. It, was, it went up about 30 today. Well, yeah, when I spoke to you um, yesterday. Tomorrow, you know, yeah, I showed so, you yesterday there was 71, and that went up to 104, so that's an increase of 30%. Yeah, so it's an increase, increase of 30%. 30%. So it's going up between 25 30% a day. And, you know, potentially, you know, um, and another thing I want to talk about as well is that um, potentially, yes, the, the governments have got um, their, they've got to get their legislation passed first in Parliament before they can actually lock anything down. And, that, and I think that, you know, so they debate it in Parliament, then it's, then it's law. So then they're given emergency they powers, powers, yeah. yeah they, these emergency powers could be passed on Monday. So potentially they can't lock anything down until that law has been passed, you know. That, that, that's how it works. 
So, so going back into the into the shop now, Rob. Um, yeah. Do you think do you think barbers should be wearing masks, gloves, glasses, uh, and all stuff like that? Or do you think it's a bit too extreme? I just I just think on social media, Sean. Um, I, I think there's a lot of scaremongering. There's a lot of stuff. Um, you know, this social contact and social distancing and and, and this and that, mate. Uh, you know. Um, is there any, any is there any evidence that it's airborne, or or, or are the scientific guys just covering the angles? You know, um, regarding gloves and masks and aprons and stuff like that. Personally, myself, mate, uh, just keep your, your shop clean. Use disinfectants, your barbicides, wipes. Constantly keep cleaning. You know, your hand sanitizers. Um, if you if you can afford one of them temperature gauges, I personally think that's a little bit of extreme. You know, <laughs> someone's temperature. But at the end of the day, I suppose you're looking after the welfare of not only yourself but your, your, your clients that are coming from the, through the door, Sean. You know, yeah, but with, with common, if common sense prevails, Rob, people who've got a high temperature shouldn't be going to the barber shop or the. No, no. Um, com- com- common sense should be in there. If people want to go buy in temperature gauges for their clients and want to make their clients like feel a bit more on edge, carry on, mate. Yeah, carry on. Like, that's, it, 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 that's your choice, but you know, I mean, look, we. Speak we can't do not any business off. Do you know what I mean? No, uh, we work with the general public, so you know, don't you? You know the feeling. You can gauge it. You, you can see what they're like and this and that, or the demeanor and. and, and they're not going to come to you if they've got the virus. No, no I know. They're not. You know, again, social media. God, there's so much on social media. And it's just another thing I want to touch on, mate. You know, there's a lot of barbers and hairdressers and just the general public in general. We're all suffering with anxiety, depression, and mm. You know, because every... Well, that, that, was, that was going to be my next question. With <laughs> that, <laughs> that was going to be my next question. So no, you've just gone straight into it. So go on, carry on. No, because the thing is, mate, it's the uncertainty. It's the uncertainty.